African News Tonight. Nigeria's Supreme Court rejects Atiku Abubaker's election challenge. Kenya's Mau Mau veterans seek royal redness from Charles III. Many in Niger are suffering under coup-related sanctions. And 114 million people displaced by war violence worldwide. Nigeria's Supreme Court on Thursday rejected appeals by two opposition candidates challenging the election of Bola Ahmed Tinubu in February's presidential election ending the eight-month dispute. After examination, a panel of seven judges of the court dismissed the appeal of candidate Atiku Abu Baker, who came second, and that of Peter Obi, who came third. Supreme Court also upheld the judgment of an appeals court in Abuja that on September 6th upheld the election of Bola Ahmed Tinubu's the duly elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Justice John Inyang Okolo said in announcing the decision on Abu Baker's appeal. The ruling put an end to an eight-month electoral dispute following the disputed election on 25th February. In the past, Nigeria's elections have often been marred by allegations of fraud and challenged in court, but the country's highest court has never reviewed the results of a presidential election since the end of military rule and the return to democracy in 1999. A former governor of Lagos and candidate of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC party Bola Tinubu won February's presidential election with 37% of the vote, beating People's Democratic Party PDP candidate Atiku Abu Baker 29% and Labour Party LP candidate Peter Obi 25%, one of the closest polls in the country's modern history. Nearly 25 million Nigerians cast ballots in the election, which was largely peaceful, but was marred by delays in the vote count and major failures in the electronic transfer of results, leading voters and the opposition to denounce massive flaws. More than six decades after Gutu Wa Kahengeli was drilled, tortured and denied food in a British-run labor camp in Kenya, the anti-coronial fighter says he is still waiting for justice. Now in his 90s, Gitu has ramped up his push for an apology and compensation from the British government ahead of a visit by King Charles III to the East African country next week. Gitu left school as a teenager after a disagreement with a principal over his anti-coronial beliefs, later joining the feared Mau Mau rebels as a young man. For nearly eight years, the guerrillas, often with dreadlocks, hair, and wearing animal skins, terrorized colonial communities launching attacks from bases in remote forests. The cruel ill treatment that was meted to the Africans by the colonial administration, I was one to suffer that. Hamsa Diakite can't remember the last time her family of eight had a good meal. She once sustained them by selling fried bread until a coup in Nigeria three months ago resulted in sanctions against the West African nation, squeezing incomes in one of the world's poorest countries and leaving millions like Hamsa struggling in the absence of aid. After elite soldiers toppled Niger's democratically elected President Mohamed Bazoum on July 26th, the country faced economic sanctions from West Africa's regional bloc, ECOWAS, as well as Western and European countries, including the United States, that had provided 
aid for health, security and infrastructure needs. Neighbors shut their borders with Niger and more than 70% of its electricity supplied by Nigeria was cut off after financial sanctions with West African countries were suspended. Niger's assets in external banks were frozen and hundreds of millions of dollars in aid were withheld. More than 114 million people are currently forcibly displaced worldwide, a record number the United Nations announced on Wednesday. The number of people displaced due to war, persecution, violence and human rights violations worldwide probably exceeded 114 million at the end of September. The Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees said in a statement. In the first half of 2023, population displacements were mainly caused by conflicts in Ukraine, Sudan, Burma, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, but also by the continuing humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan and a combination of drought, flooding, and insecurity in Somalia. More than half of all displaced people have been forced to cross a border, the agency said, and just three nations, Afghanistan, Syria, and Ukraine, are home to almost a third of the world's displaced people. The world's attention is currently and rightly focused on the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, but globally, far too many conflicts are prof proliferating are proliferating or intensifying, destroying innocent lives and uprooting populations, said UNHCL head Filippo Grandi. The international community's inability to resolve conflicts or prevent new ones is causing displacement and misery. We must work together to end conflict and enable refugees and other displaced people to return home or start their lives again, he wrote in a statement. In its report, compiling data for the first half of 2023, the UN agency estimates that there were 110 million displaced people in the world in the mid-June, 1.6 million more than, at the, more than at the same time in 2022. According to UNHCL, however, this figure rose again over the following three months to probably exceed 114 million by the end of September. <laughs>